to, today we want to talk about Stackless. Former name was Stackless Python. I don't know uh, how many people know about this project already. Uh, it is a rather old one. Um, and uh, in the last couple of months, uh, a lot of changes have been have been made. A lot of enhancements, uh, which uh, really make Stackless very usable and a drop-in replacement for uh, C Python. And that's uh, mostly uh, the work of my colleagues. And one of them is uh, Anselm Kois, who is uh, giving the majority of this talk today. Um, I think to do an introduction about uh, what, stackless, uh, what stackless Python is and um, then we get to the new things and uh, but please uh, interrupt me when I'm quibbling too much uh, I will do the same for, no, no, for you okay no, no, no. so let me see How is this good so? How is it looks? Uh, it was, was previously it was okay. Presentation mode? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, okay. Just. Yep. Okay, so what is Stackless? It has been uh, around since uh, 1998 and uh, had its uh, shadow existence behind uh, regular Python and it uh, is, is kind of a niche product which uh, tries to do things that normal Python cannot do. So um, it is called that uh, stackless is a Python that does not use the C stack. Um, that's a lie because of course it does use the C stack. Uh, it does not uh, uh, it, it does not uh, have problems because of that, because the C stack is always um, built up and uh, and removed again. So uh, stackless means that there is no dependency from the C stack, and that is the main reason to be able to do task switching and other stuff. So actually, Stackless is a Python version that does not keep uh, state on the C stack. It has some state sometimes, but uh, in certain um, at certain times where it can perform some context switch, uh, this stack state is removed completely. So it's breathing up and down uh, until um, so something else has to, has to be run. So this is, yeah, theoretically, it, in, a, in an uh, ideal world, it would work this way, but uh, in the real world, in 90% of all cases, it, it works in this uh, cooperative manner, but not, not always. So Stackless is like C Python. <coughs> Unless you import the Stackless module, there's nothing changed at all not even the, the behavior, uh, the creation of recursion level limits and all, uh, all of that, it's all original C Python. It can do a little bit more than C Python. So there's a stackless module and you can import the stackless module and that uh, suddenly creates a lot of new a few new functions with a lot of possibilities. So it's, it looks a little bit like an extension module, but it is no extension module because uh, stackless Python requires uh, quite a lot of changes to the interpreter. This does not change uh, the way how you use it and uh, it does not change the uh, format of, of pickled uh, things or anything else, but the way the virtual machine is working is different from that from C Python. And I think uh, Stackless does it the right way and uh, C Python does not, but that's a long fight. I will probably lose in the end. <laughs> okay. 
So yeah, what is really what, what is it about stackless? Uh, yeah, you have a little tiny mo uh, tight and tiny programs. These tiny programs can be switched forth and back. Um, you can communicate uh, over channels between these tiny programs. The tiny programs are called tasklets. Uh, it's similar to so-called micro-threads, uh, but there are no threads at all. A, a tasklet is, tight, uh, is just a, a tiny piece of program that runs a while and at some point it decides uh, to, to yield its uh, time slice to someone else and then it continues uh, in another place in the program. And that's the difference uh, to CPython. Um, that's something that uh, was invented for CPython in 3.3 or 3.4, I think, uh, by using uh, yield from constructions or so. Stackless had that since 19, or oh, since 2002, I think. Okay. So actually we have uh, tasklets with, which are a little like coroutines and this can switch freely uh, between each other. Um, and the ability to do so is, yeah, is the way the uh, interpreter is constructed, uh, which is non-recursive, but it's only um, doing small calls and going back before it switches to something else, so we are, have no uh, um, contention of the C stack, which uh, in, in C Python you have the C stack, and if you have three nested calls of a Python function, you also have three nested calls of C functions which uh, do this uh, Python function. And that's exactly what Stackless does not. Okay, here's a little example. We have uh, some cooperative uh, multitasking. We import uh, stackless. Uh, we define two functions, a receiving tasklet and a sending tasklet. And then we uh, just start them. Uh, I, I did some, some examples just in, in order to, to save me from typing because typing is not so well, but we can have some examples uh, afterwards. So let, let me skim over this. So uh, when the tasklets are communicating, you see the, uh, some protocol where you see that uh, they are jumping from from one context to the other, and well, some people might say, uh, "Why don't you just use the greenlet?" Uh, the greenlet is actually uh, quite famous and very complete and good implementation uh, of um, the task switching. It does that with some technology from Stackless Python. Uh, which is called hard switching. Um, it does that by slicing the C stack into uh, small pieces and uh, really brute force uh, context switching. So uh, it, it is quite perfect because um, the greenlet has been unmaintained for many years and it's uh, always working because it does not know anything about the things it is switching. So uh, it is very stable and very major, but it has the drawback that it's slower than uh, stackless Python and it has some things that it cannot do. So um, the technology of the greenlet is quite close to stackless 2.0, where we only had this hard switching, grabbing pieces of the stack and uh, moving them around. The soft switching uh, does that in a cooperative manner, so the uh, stack is uh, actively uh, unwound and uh, the context switching is built into the interpreter, and that is much more work because uh, it's harder to maintain, it's also much more efficient um, and has, yeah, has, has some, some other advantages. 
we come to that later. So we might talk about the hard switching, uh, but I think maybe not now. Hard switching and soft switching is some real uh, difference between uh, stackless and greenlets. But the real thing actually is uh, with stackless Python we can pick a program state. So we, had, we don't have only the ability to, to switch around like uh, greenlets can do, but we can pick the program state. We can run a program uh, to a certain point, then take a snapshot of the program and uh, take the, that snapshot on another machine or tomorrow or whenever in the cloud and continue the program from where it was pickled. So uh, I have a little a demonstration that takes uh, a simple recursive functions just to show how uh, that you have a recursive function that calls itself until a certain level and then uh, winds back. And, well, if you run that, then you see uh, the, the function uh, prints uh, one to nine, uh, then some word, and then it goes back, comes out of its recursion. And the interesting thing is when we restart that program later on, then we can see uh, it continues exactly at the point where uh, the program state was saved and, and continues to run that part of the execution. Okay. You see that line here. Um, the picture over there in the picture bound. Yeah, okay. What was I doing? Okay. Um, yeah. Um, okay, um, this is the. Uh, we have that as a running demo as well, and I think we should, uh, we should show, show it yes. right now or later? No. No? Okay. Okay. <laughs> So I have, uh, well, do I need to make this bigger? Is it visible? Yes, it's perfectly visible. Just, just one. Okay, I run the program. This is the recursive uh, run. Um, and it's a, a little bit enhanced, the example. I worked on that yesterday. Uh, the recursive function goes to a certain point, comes back, and then it says, well, I was recorded on Darwin. So it was uh, recorded on this platform. I can now um, run it. It has uh, written its output uh, as a pickle in, into a taskdat.pickle, and I can run the program again uh, and give it the, the pickle as an argument. And you can see, here at the point where, uh, at, at the high, there was the, the, the program state was uh, written to the pickle. And uh, here where we restart the pickle, uh, it was, it came out of the recursion. So uh, the, the stack with, the, with all the recursive calls was pickled and was now uh, revived and uh, continued to run. And we can do even more because. Um, so I will now. It's dangerous because I'm now starting Windows. 
and I have prepared uh, a Windows uh, share. Let me see if it works. Okay, yeah. Uh, we are now in the same, um, uh, on the same virtual drive in the virtual uh, parallels Windows machine, and we have the um, same program here, and I can run that. Okay, so I started the same program uh, on Windows. It uh, returned from the cursion and tells us I was recorded on Darwin but continued on Win32. And it's actually really the same uh, task that Pickle we recorded. You look at the timestamp, it's just uh, four minutes from now. <laughs> and actually, we are using uh, this technique in production at large. Uh, at, uh, important uh, German auto manufacturers, automakers uh, to control uh, high performance computing jobs where you have start on the desktop uh, on the des on the desktop of an engineer running Windows and then move a, a program to an HPC cluster running Linux. So that's uh, working well. Okay, so I will do the same thing the other way, way around and then close the Windows shell because... Uh, okay, so uh, I did the same thing here. Now I'm stopping the Parallels uh, desktop. And... On, run the same thing on the other side and let's see what it tells us now. Yeah. I was recorded on Win32 but continued on Darwin. So uh, just so everybody believes that uh, we moved a running program from uh, um, Mac OS X 64-bit to Windows 32-bit and it, it still works. Okay. Well, that's a, just a summary, I think, about uh, what you tol already told us, uh, green dot versus stackless. Yep, okay. So perhaps we skip this <laughs> slide. Yeah, I think I said it all, right? Okay, so the reason why stackless really makes a difference is... Oh, it's still a bug. Um, we have the persistence. We can use uh, persistence, cloud computing, move uh, running programs around. Uh, use a different computer, use a different operating system, do it in a cloud. The cloud is the only thing that I didn't show right now. We can save snapshots. Uh, you can also uh, use uh, multiple snapshots on, and uh, whatever you want. So actually you can do with Stackless everything you can do with regular Python. It's fully compatible to regular C Python, and it's, much, uh, it's, it's even much more fully compatible now as it was before. <laughs> yeah, yes, indeed. Um, we, we fixed some corner cases where pro uh, extension modules that uh, didn't uh, adhere to the coding standards for Python extension modules didn't work in the stack class. And unfortunately, yeah. there are quite a few and important extension modules of this kind. For instance, PySide. PySide is a very important thing. Uh, I'm working with PySide uh, since uh, 2011, and I could not use stackless Python. It was crazy. Uh, uh, in spring this year, uh, this problem has been solved. Now uh, it's, it runs really well with uh, 
Yeah, right. I actually, actually, I have another thing to show. Um, what you see here is a little puzzle game, and this puzzle game is that uh, visible? Yeah, this puzzle puzzle game is written in is a demo from PySide, and uh, this runs on top of stackless Python. So the old problem has been solved. We can, well, and so on. Another little demo is, for instance, uh, So we have a little painter demo, painter demo uh, some uh, different colors which are painted uh, with different styles and certain rotations. So uh, all great things. Uh, it's uh, actually stuff for, uh, for an extra Q uh, PyQT or PySci talk. Uh, I was just so happy that this now really works with stackless, so I had to show that. The last thing, uh, a nice embedded dialogues. Here we go. This is um, a projection of a dialogue into an open GL uh, perspective, and uh, so it's a very, very sophisticated Jewish stuff here. And you can ha uh, have that all in uh, in stackless Python now. So yes. Yep. I think that was about what I wanted to show and say. And so, I might um, pass over to you now. Okay. So um, there's also a few things that uh, stackless can use for. Uh, Christian didn't mention yet, so um, you can use the build as a primitive uh, function Stackless provides, especially the task list and the channels to build uh, control structures for higher level uh, scheduling paradigmas. So you can, we can uh, implement, for instance, uh, C-sharp style async programming, or um, we can implement the go-less Thanks, uh, Christian could uh, tell something about it. I'm not so in this business. I'm more in the um, pickling and migration of <laughs> programs. So now we have seen what Stackless is, and we have to talk about the Stackless project too. Um, the Stackless project, well, who is it? That's all. So we are, some, uh, of course, the maintainers, uh, and but also all Stackless users. So who is using Stackless? And, well, there are a few, uh, few well-known users, as uh, Nagare, I hope I pronounce this correct, a web framework is based on Stackless. Then CCP Games, uh, the company behind the EVE Online, uh, multi-user uh, online game, you probably know it, yes, as some spacecraft is flying around and so very cool graphics and I can show it here I have it on the machine <laughs> and, uh, well actually um, so I use Stackless since many years and have built a large part of their infrastructure on Stackless then there are a few less known users um, customers of the company I work for science and computing using uh, Stackless Pythons on a few thousand systems and the systems all together have over 100,000 cores. So that's quite a bit. And well, since there are also unknown users, or, so I 
recently uh, looked at the um, access log files of www.stackless.com and I was very surprised to find that we have about 220 downloads of the Windows installer each day and 85 downloads of the source archive. So I don't know who is downloading it, but uh, obviously someone does it. And uh, we also uh, see that 98% of the Windows installer downloads are for Python 2.7 and for the source archives so are 96% for Python 2. So it looks like the production usage of Python uh, 3 is quite low. So uh, Christian already talked about the history and Stackless was formerly known as Stackless Python. I will probably say something about it. And it's invented by Christian. And I think the first version was 1.5, is that correct? Uh, yes, the first was uh, Python 1.5, and it was continuation based and uh, much more complicated <laughs> instead. So uh, the history is the thing Christian knows best. Uh, but uh, this talk is not about ancient times and the history of Stackless Python, but about the recent changes. Some more information about the Stackless project. Who is working on it? Well, we are just a few uh, volunteers, Christian and then uh, Christian Weller johnson Richard Tew, the, what's the pronunciation of Richard? Richard Tew, yes, he's still Q, working yes, on it. Correct. And uh, myself and all in all, we have, uh, we are, it's less than one full-time equivalent, yes, yeah, so we can't do very much. We have a few resources, um, such as Stackless website, uh, uh, stackless.com, so you can get Stackless Python, and that's a, a primary uh, address for this project. Then we have the documentation, it's now hosted on Read the Docs. And that's very fortunate because uh, we can host uh, the documentation for every version of Stackless, so that's really a good thing. And um, <coughs> since a short time, we have uh, moved the development environment to Bitbucket, and we have the project Stackless uh, Dev Stackless, and also um, I have a project for the Stackless in, as a Installer that can be used with the installer pip. And I have to say, we have really, really happy that there's a wonderful infrastructure provided by, uh, uh, by Bitbucket and Read the Docs. Without this infrastructure, it wouldn't be possible to maintain such a project. So, how can you use Stackless? Well, you have to install it, obviously. Yes, and there are a few options. Um, the simplest and uh, most common way is probably to get the installer from uh, stackless.com and the installer is available for Windows and uh, for Macintosh uh, OS X. So just download it and install it. It's a usual MSI installer. Or I, I don't know the format that Mac is. Yes, and that's uh, something really great because uh, uh, the installer for OS X, I used that the first time now. Uh, it just replaced my standard C Python from python.org. Uh, it continued to run with all installed extensions because uh, it simply uh, swapped out the interpreter, so I was very pleased with that. Uh, it's a great experience it's now to, to have installers. I never used installers, but, but now I'm very keen on that. Sorry. Yes, that's fine. And then we have, um, for the Linux people and also for Windows, if you're on Windows and using virtual end, for instance, a um, great way to install a Stackless. Um, we made an installer, an umbrella installer set. Um, that's a Stackless Python here. And um, if you install this umbrella installer with pip or, or easy install, it detects your system and then in a second stage uh, downloads um, a pre-compiled package that only uh, 
almost only contains uh, the, the uh, Python library and the executable, and three or four uh, library modules, and installs them in a way that uh, doesn't uh, hurt your existing Python installation. You get a new command, SL Python, Stackless Python, and well, it's working because Stackless is almost C Python, so we have no problem to uh, implant uh, this new command into an existing installation. Of course, on Linux, if you uh, do this for the uh, system Python, you need uh, uh, appropriate access rights, probably you have to be root. And finally, you can get the source code and compile it just with uh, as you can do it for the regular C Python. And if you need something like a debug build or uh, special installation options, then that's the way to go. So, um, if something doesn't work, that's all fine in theory, but uh, the practice is sometimes different. Well, first, uh, stackless is major, yes. Uh, for the biggest part, it's just C Python and 2.7 is uh, now really solid and it has many users, so usually these things work. Stackless uh, 3.3 is also good. Um, that's currently the only maintained version of Python 3. Uh, we don't uh, maintain uh, 3.2 or we don't release uh, uh, for 3.2 anymore. Cause um, may I add that uh, right now we have. Uh, Sector Python 2.7.8, which is uh, very complete and working. Uh, we failed to uh, finish the Python uh, Stackless uh, 3.4 version, yes. and we want to do that on the sprint uh, in the next few days. Maybe it works. So it's actually my intent is to support uh, Python 3 as much as possible. But it's uh, quite some hacking and fixing. So yeah, so there are a few bugs uh, in the area of pickling because that's where we have uh, stackless specific extensions, and also uh, uh, Python 3.4 got an a new uh, version of the pickling protocol. But feel invited to, to participate in this. Yeah, that's, that's actually. So if something still does not work. <laughs> Uh, we have the mailing list, and we and you can always open an issue on our big bucket site. And sometimes you might need commercial support. And well, unfortunately, there's uh, so that's a bit of a difficult uh, uh, topic. You can ask Christian; he is uh, probably. Uh, will help you if we can, and you could uh, negotiate an agreement with science and computing, but uh, we are more focused on bigger companies, so the agreement might be too expensive. But we can provide uh, stackless support around the world and 24 hours a day and seven days a week if it is necessary. And then I think you had a you had something um, you wanted to show interactively, and we are running out of time. So oh, okay, fine. Ahead. Yes, good. I will yes. just go to the recent advancements. Um, we switched. Uh, I told I already told it. We improved stackless a bit. Uh, Low-level task not methods are now much more complete, and important the custom and interstretch scheduling is working more stable. We have, better, have a better compatibility with C Python, and the documentation has been updated, and we got uh, better debugger support recently. So that's very important, and a few other bug fixes. And we also did something that didn't work out. Um, the documentation, it's now on read the docs, and that's the most important point. And it is uh, the regular C Python documentation and a stackler specific addendum, an ad additional chapter. And this uh, chapter is now also complete and correct. It wasn't some times ago. And we also adhere to the uh, 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 Python Software Foundation trademark uses policy for the trademark Python. And that's also the reason we changed the name, because um, 
as a, a PSF says, you should uh, not use uh, the name Python alone. So uh, the source code also contains a well-maintained change log file now, and our wiki pages still need some love. <laughs> um, I probably uh, will go over the technical details very quick. Um, we have a more complete uh, set of low-level methods, and you can find that in the documentation. It's usually not so interesting. But we have here an um, uh, image, and it shows you that we have added a few, uh, that's a state chart of, the, of a tasklet, yes? And the tasklet is created, it's not alive, and then it's alive and scheduled eventually. And you see we have added a few red uh, arrows um, that weren't available previously, so you are now much more flexible. We have an enhanced functionality in the schedulers. It's not longer necessary to run the scheduler from the uh, main tasklet. You can run it from every other tasklet or from within a library or something like that. Christian Valio Johnson uh, implemented it and he was very excited about it. Uh, but uh, it's fairly new and there are no, I don't know any application of this new functionality yet. Custom scheduling is now possible using the new method tasklet switch. It simply transfers the control from the caller to the argument of the tasklet switch function. And that's independent from the scheduler and it's an atomic operation so you can build your own scheduling based on it. Um, there are known applications, um, for instance, we have in the Stackless Lib, that's a library, a collection of uh, functions you could use for your programs with Stackless. Yeah, and, uh, it's not really necessary to use them, but there's a module called async, and it's a C-sharp style asynchronous programming. And it also provides uh, some futures, uh, uh, Python futures, uh, based on uh, uh, tasklets. Can you quickly show your interactive yes, session? Yes, yes, yes. Because I'm going to the rest Okay. Uh, Otherwise, so let's move on. Uh, multi inter thread scheduling is probably not so interesting. Uh, subclassing also. We have bug fixes already. Uh, Christian um, showed you the uh, PySide working. And we have better debugger support now. Because uh, we added some hooks for debuggers and we got uh, two new EDAs working. The Wingware debugger is uh, supports stackless since ever, since ever, but now uh, PyDev and uh, also PyCharm started supporting uh, stackless and Hi. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, here we are. So I will show the PyDev uh, debugger. And we have a very, very simple program. It's an, a demonstration program from the stackless source. And it shows you how to implement a mutex uh, using uh, channels and uh, task gets. That's really not important. If you run this program, I simply um, run it. Yes, it has some output, yes. Uh, we have here this renamed uh, task gets and say uh, the fu task get function is this function f and while well, it acquires a lot as a mutex and then it schedules, it passes the control to, back to the scheduler, and then it releases the mutex again. And if you run it, you see, uh, well, the expected output, yeah, so run uh, interleaved into each other. So now let's debug it. I already set a breakpoint here. And we debug it as a Python run. Uh, PyDev switches to the uh, Python debug perspective, and we are here, so we step over. That's the creation of the task. Let's debug is that's false, yes. So now let's step into, and here you see the uh, actually the threads or frame stacks that are known to the debugger. Now I switch here, and we see how we got 
Um, still, the main thread is now F, but we got a post main task that of main thread. And if you look here, yeah, that's, that's, that's the run. That was the main task. So now it's a different task that running. So let's stop uh, this one. We will get the log. That's, that's not surprisingly because we are the first task yet. Uh, so, hey, we are back here. But now if you look, oh, there's another Tasklet. So we have no three, and you see uh, that's a scheduled task that ticks. It was a task that we have seen previously, and it's sitting here in the schedule and waiting to uh, be reactivated. And again, but now if we uh, look, go into lock here with. Uh, We will see here it blocks, yes. And now we have the third task. So you see the debugger perfectly supports uh, the switching between the task and the switching between the uh, context of the execution. And that's important. Without this support, you wouldn't be able to debug this uh, reasonably. So I just continue it and I'm done with it now. And I think we have very uh, few things uh, still to say. Um, future goals. In the immediate futures, we would like to find additional volunteers to help us. Yes, then stack us three dot four dot one, and we uh, also would like to install the pip installer to cover more versions, especially Python three. And Later, yes, we will probably still need additional guarantees. <laughs> and uh, I also would like to update the stackless implementation that is contained in PyPy. Yes, because that's I, also something we could uh, try on, uh, on a sprint to work on yes, that, because I, that's a I've few changes, and it's quite a mixture of uh, stackless programming with the PyPy guys, maybe interesting. And, well, there are some uh, things we also have done that was a thing that didn't work out. We had problems with the Visual Studio install, uh, compiler with the old uh, uh, Visual Studio 2008. And um, then we made a patch uh, to uh, build uh, Python 2.7 uh, with Visual Studio 2010. And, if you don't change the, the uh, name of the Python DLLs, then you can get serious problems. Because if uh, the DLL was um, compiled with a different compiler, it uses a different uh, C-runtime library, and this can cause all sorts of problems. In the end, we uh, currently can't publish it because we have no resources, and it's, so it's a possible violation of the a trademark Python, and so it's uh, still in our, in our repository, but it's... Uh, well, that's the question. Um, do we want to support a non-existent uh, Python 2.8 in the form of a stackless 2.8, which grabs all the things that are missing from CPython? Or do we not want to do that? And I, I know uh, there are a couple of people who think it's a great idea, and other people are there who think it's a very bad idea. So we are really undecided and wanted to leave that uh, to hear your opinions about. Should we do something about that? Yes, okay. And so surely we can't do it without uh, participation, yes. and. Probably it would also need some founding, yes. So that's all, and any questions so far?